Oh. So what do you know about Bear Grylls, mate? Other than the fact he drinks his own piss? Well, that was the only thing I knew about him, so thanks, Carl. All right, speaking of drinking piss. There we go. Now we're not going to get accused of being sponsored, are we? <laughs> Bear Grylls is a man whose life reads like John McClane's obituary, both in terms of the crazy shit he's done and how ridiculous it sounds. For example, consider a time he nearly sheared off his own nipple with a pizza. Yeah, I really don't know much about Bear Grylls yeah. other than like he's on TV yeah, doing gonna be, survival stuff. It's gonna be a dry video, Lucas, if you can't riff on Bear Grylls. But uh. people like Lucas who think, oh, he's, he's a dude on TV. No, he's actually like got a very illustrious and storied career and he was in the SAS oh, right, as okay. a survival teacher. So he taught survival techniques to the SAS. So he knows his stuff and he's like, you know, cut his teeth with like, you know, one of the most hardened and respected military units on earth and the best playable side in Call of Duty. Does the SAS get that pass forever just because they wear the gas masks? Oh yeah, probably. Because they look so fucking cool in every piece of media they're in yeah. just because of the gas masks. Yeah, like yeah. the first mission of like Modern Warfare like, you know, the original oh, yeah. one, where they all wear the gas masks. Or like the final mission, Mile High Club. Did you ever manage to do it on Veteran? Uh, yeah, I did the in achievement seconds. for like the 60 seconds oh, we, or whatever. Uh, people don't know what we're talking about. Just put a clip in of just like, the amount of shit going on in that scene on Veteran. It's crazy. But yeah, like, the SAS like so fucking cool and Bear Grylls serve with them. And there's an idea of just like, you know, how tough these guys are. Bear Grylls was only discharged from the SAS after he broke his spine during a parachuting accident. Oh my God. So all the crazy stuff you've seen Bear Grylls do on TV is remember after he walked off having his spine snapped in half because he fell out of a plane. Also, I think like a year after he broke his spine, he climbed Everest. He's a tough dude and he knows what he's talking about and he's not just a television personality and we should address the fact that he has admitted and been caught using like camera trickery for some of his shows. I think like there was an expose, it was like, oh, Bear Grylls sometimes stays in a hotel when he's filming his show. And his oh no. And his response was, well, yeah. I, I am a survival expert. I serve with the S. I know what I'm talking about. I Doesn't don't, mean he has to suffer through the survival part so I don't have again. to sleep under a tent made of my own shit and some leaves to prove that I know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, the fucking people I get from the SAS go, yeah, Bear knows his shit. Bear knows what he's doing. Yeah, and the people who help make his shows, his various producers, the cameramen, they've all said, like, we do that sometimes, but he is fully capable of doing everything seen on the show. And sometimes he'll even do stuff that's really impressive that we don't get to film. Oh, right, okay. For example, like during one filming session, like they're in like the woods somewhere where it's very, very cold, mm. and he's talking about how well, uh, these lakes are very thin. If you fall into them, you will die in 60 seconds as he falls into the lake. <laughs> and they stop filming at this point. They film that and they film him climbing out. They didn't help him because they knew. They knew he was going to be all right. And they went to like, you know, change the camera equipment over as he dried himself off. They didn't help him? No, because he's Bear Grylls. He knows what he's doing. He's actually... well, you, you just watched a man who said you will die in 60 seconds falling into a lake yeah. and just watched him fall into but a lake. But he knows that will get out. And that's what he was demonstrating. Here's how you get out of a lake. And he shows like the, really, the way you do it. And obviously helping someone in that situation is probably the worst thing you can do if the ice is thin because then you'll fall in. Yeah, I and, suppose. And I think yeah. he even talks about that while doing it. And after he gets out and they knew he was all right, they went to like change the cameras over, put some new batteries in, that sort of thing. And they looked over and they see Bear Grylls stripping off, completely start bollock naked and rolling around in the snow. Well, yeah, because... That's how you dry. And they didn't, re but they didn't realise that's a thing you do. And they saw, uh, what, what are right. you doing, Bear? He goes, oh, I'm drying off. As he's naked, rolling in the snow. And they looked at oh man, we probably should have filmed that. It'd probably been good television. <laughs> that's just an example of the kind of shit he'll do when the camera's not rolling. Yeah. And they said, well, we should have filmed that. So it would have been really good for the episode because obviously it demonstrates the survival technique and it just showcases how insane he is. <laughs> I just love the idea that he's just some sort of crazy man where like, when he's not got the camera roll, he's just running around the woods naked. Imagine bumping into that. So imagine like, you're going through the woods and you think you're, de like, you think you're delirious. Like, oh God, now I'm going crazy. I've, not, I've been out here for ages with no food and no water. And a naked man runs past you with a camera crew following him. <laughs> I watched a lot of Bear Grylls. I like Bear Grylls. But um, have you watched any like survival shows or like Raimi as that sort of thing? Uh, I've watched Survivor. Does okay. that count? I'm just saying, have you got any like, is there any tips from those shows that you like picked up and remembered, even though you will likely never need to use them, should um, never be stuck in the woods or the I desert? I did see a clip of Bear Grylls, and it was talking about if you like really need food, go to like Second Harvest. 
Mm. So like um, animal, du- um, elephant dung often has like whole nuts left in them okay, that you can stuff eat like and stuff like that. Like the one that I learned, and I'll, I'll probably never need to use this, but it is, if you are dying, if you are dying of thirst and you come across water, even if it's dirty, drink it. Because dysentery and all the de- diseases and parasites you get from water will kill you in about a week. Lack of water will kill you in three days. So okay. The, so the reasoning is... You've got a couple of days longer to survive. You'll die still, but it gives you a few extra days to get to safety. Yeah, then, yeah. then you can address the problem then. So that's a piece of advice I've always remembered, but I will never use. But it's like, oh, if you're dying of thirst and you find what to drink it, lack of water will kill you faster than whatever's in, whatever is in there. I'm not going to lie. If I'm stuck in like the middle of a forest or something and I have no way of surviving... I'll probably just let myself die in three days <laughs> rather than suffer through dysentery for a week. So what the hell are you talking about Peter shearing off his nipple? Okay, well, as you might imagine, given his line of work and the stuff that he does not like, you know, just how dangerous, like, just being Bear Grylls is. Also, can we talk about how cool his name is? It's like Sergeant Max Fightmaster, which is a real dude. He injures himself a lot. He's got a lot of, like, gnarly-ass scars. And I'd imagine, yeah. Potentially, like, the most gnarly one is a very, very painful-looking one across. I think it's his right nipple. And he always gets asked about it whenever he, like, takes his shirt off. And he has to sheepishly admit, like, people think, oh, is it from, like, an alligator? And, uh, and he's like, no. It's really embarrassing, actually, because I get asked about it all the time because it's the most painful-looking one because it's the nipple. Yeah. So, like, people don't know, why is the nipple so painful? Like, you know what? You've not been nipple twi- it's, like, twisted. It's tender. I actually have a bruise on my left nipple because my mate titty twisted me. He went, oh, hi, Carl. Whoop! Bruise. He bruised my nip, man. Fucking hell. So anyway, I, and he goes, like, yeah, really painful, but it was super bad. I didn't get it from like, you know, one of my events. didn't fall down like a flight of stairs and like that. So I was actually um, really excited for a pizza and I was in a bathing suit and I went to the oven to get the pizza out. And I dropped the pizza on my chest like oh, the baking tray. Yeah. The, ba- the boiling hot baking tray just hit him across the nipple oh. and just went straight across it and burned his nipple. And so, oh, that's so fucking no, Just think about seared nips. Yeah. Lucas, can you can you imagine the agony of seared oh, nips? Oh, no, like I can't. That? And I think he dropped the pizza as well. It's the most depressing bit of it. He, <laughs> lo- he lost the pizza. Because the natural reaction is to just yeah. like throw away whatever's burning you. Oh, man. So that reminds me of like I think the saddest thing you see after like if you go out on like a Saturday morning or a Friday you know a Sunday morning a full takeaway on yeah. the floor <laughs> you're walking through a town centre and you just see a upturned takeaway and you go oh someone had a rough it's night it's like the adult equivalent of when you just drop a full ice cream off your coat yeah oh god it's so bad the thing is though that is like the most like lazy man injury it ever is, yeah. is like I got injured by taking pizza out of the oven while I hadn't got a t-shirt on because I was because I was just I got, <laughs> probably just swimming or something like that presumably like in a hot like tub or something like shit, he just went yeah. out to get a pizza and just burnt his nip off it's like you fucking idiot and he's like he's like it's his most impressive looking scar it's great oh it's the most depressing scar he's got as well. it's, oh god it's <laughs> seared nips what do you do how do you counter seared nips so I don't think I can compete with seared nips. Which is like, <laughs> just the, the sentence alone is just terrifying to me. But I think we talked in a video with Nisha about silly injuries we've had. Have you got any you want to share with the group? Um, I've burnt myself a few times with like soldering irons in school. Uh, I also, you know, work on a grill sometimes at work. Well, what's the worst you've seen someone get burned? I've seen like a few people with nasty scars on the arm from like touching heat lamps and oh, stuff that, like that. that. I can talk about the worst one I've ever heard and this scares me so much. And uh, In the kitchen sometimes what you have, I'm not sure what it's called, but basically it's just a pot of boiling water and you can put like, you can cook meat in it and stuff like that. And you have to wear a very, very thick rubber glove. Uh, so yeah. thick in fact, it goes all the way up to your, like, up to your shoulder. And I had a story from a mate of mine who works in the kitchen. He says, oh yeah, a guy went in to get this thing and he dropped it and then leaned down to get it more, and all the boiling water went oh. into the top. And obviously it's insulated enough to stop the boiling water hurting you, so all the heat got insulated. Yeah. And he lost all the skin on his arm. Oh my God. And every time I think about that, I go, because his, his fingernails fell off. It's the worst one I've ever heard. Oh and my so God, fine. that is horrifying. The worst injury I've seen, I think I've mentioned it before, is someone was making a cocktail, and rather than getting the proper Boston shaker, they got a pint glass, they look very similar. <laughs> Trying to make a cocktail. Oh, actually wait, this was me. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I think I did this. I'm and sorry, then, what? And, and then someone else did it. So now you're like remembering watching yourself do this. Because I've heard people tell the story so much. Yeah, and uh, like smash broken glass into the hands. 
and it was a cocktail with um, lime in it. Oh. So it's just broken glass. And I had to go to my boss and just go, yeah. I think I also fell over once and then scraped all my hand on a pavement because I fell down a flight of stairs. I actually, yeah. it's so embarrassing, it's like a Bear Grylls style injury. I slipped on a leaf. I slipped on a wet leaf walking down to my house. I wasn't even drunk, that's what makes it worse. Fell, hands in front of me, gravel. <laughs> just scraped all the skin off like the palm of my hand. Yeah, I, um, I remember back in my high school, like our um, theatre had a nylon carpet. And once I was like running, tripped, hands and knees, just like gone, like ripped through, ripped straight through my jeans like they weren't there. And then I just had like jeans like melded into my like oh. scar and I had to like pick the bit of jeans out of my injuries.